Kurt Jackson came to us with this great idea, which was working in a, in a sense in the footsteps of Turner. And Turner had produced these wonderful, uh, evocative images of the Southwest, which had inspired him, and he it inspired him to do new work. And he wanted to put together his new work with these wonderful historical works to create a great show. On Turner's visit to the Southwest, he captured some of the kind of iconic scenes of the area. Um, and this one of Land's End is particularly strong. You know, it's a sense of drama, the light and the dark, the stormy skies, the seas. It's a fantastic and really powerful work, I think. Turner was a really successful artist, as we all know, and we think of him primarily as a watercolorist. But of course, he was also a great businessman uh, and understood the potential of creating great views of great landscapes, especially in the Southwest. So uh, Turner came to the Southwest on a number of occasions, producing wonderful views that could be uh, purchased by a much wider audience. I mean, Turner is this, is this great figure, this, this character, this historical character, this reference point, this, this person that you can't ignore, you can't deny that body of work's existence when you're looking at the history of art. So I went to the exact locations. I tried to find the exact, as it were, the footsteps of Turner, where he put his easel poles. And sometimes it's very difficult because, as I say, Turner used so much artistic license. He'd turn places around, he'd turn them back to front, he'd remove whole tranches of the landscape, he'd bring whole bits in. He was just uh, magnificent in the way he had this, this freedom to do what he wanted to do. So sometimes it's very difficult. You'll walk around for days trying to find the exact place. Other times it's there, bang. You can find the exact rock he stood on, the exact rocks in the foreground, the headland in the background, it's all there. Because often the, he made these visits to these locations very briefly, very fleeting. He did these speedy little drawings in his sketchbooks and that was the information with what he stored up in his memory, which was, his memory was prodigious. He could, he, he had a photographic memory as far as I can see. And he'd take that away back to his studio and that's where he made these magnificent finished pieces. In the case of this big one of Oakhampton Castle, quite a few days I wandered round and round Oakhampton Castle, trying to work out how on earth he'd, he'd found this angle. So I found the point I wanted to paint from and it's now the middle of an oak forest. Um, and the, the castle just is just glimpsed through the trees. I took a huge roll of linen canvas there, unrolled it on the forest floor, and then spent three or four days jumping around, pouring paint on, um, scraping away, and trying to produce a painting that somehow captured this interior of this forested valley side with the castle peeking through in the distance. Beautiful, beautiful place to work, serious challenge. And uh, eventually I produced what, I, ideally somehow it captures the place I was working in as well.